And we've also put out a few annual gathering brochures. Our annual gathering takes place in July each year, right around the 12th, which is uh, the date that Thoreau is uh, born. And this year our annual gathering runs from July 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. And the gathering is just a wonderful, wonderful experience. It's, it's one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons that I got involved with the organization. Uh, four days of just great lectures by the world's experts on Thoreau, and we definitely will have some scholars from around the world, from Spain and Bulgaria and other locations from, from Russia. Um, and this year's theme for our annual gathering is um, the individual and the state. And our keynote speaker will be Larry Buell, or Lawrence Buell from, from Harvard. He's a professor of English there. So John, come up. I'd like to just add one more announcement there. Uh, among the several programs that the Thoreau Society is uh, in the process of developing um, as we move on with Thoreau in the 21st century is a summer program uh, called Thoreau Country Today, a summer sojourn. And uh, to that, we are inviting high school students from around the country to apply. Uh, to this program, which would then um, afford them the opportunity of coming to Concord, living here for eight days or so, uh, in private homes, and uh, attending seminars and visiting places uh, in Concord, in Boston, and the Merrimack, that inspired for herself. Well, welcome everyone to uh, this third and final evening of the Thoreau Society's first Lyceum series, which follows a tradition established in Concord by Thoreau and his contemporaries in the 19th century. It was their desire to call upon the notable thinkers of, the, of their time to bring the most pressing of ideas into view for their audiences. And our design has been to do the same, while bringing you modern visions that best reflect the timeless perceptions so soundly expressed in Thoreau's Walden and his other books. Central to Thoreau's convictions was his belief in the power of the individual to identify the natural laws of the universe as a means to cultivating a productive life. This, in his mind, was superior to any direction other individuals and our society might offer. He also acknowledged, however, that the pursuit of such individualism is overwhelmingly hindered by external influences. Yet with prudence, perspective, and discipline, we are surely capable of elevating ourselves to a life more fulfilled. <coughs> As Thoreau urged individuals to depend on their own personal strengths, he looked to the East for inspiration in his work. Our guest this evening has followed a similar path. Dr. Benson was among the first to use Western scientific methods to show that regular meditation, a legacy coming to us from the East, can counteract the harmful impact of stress. He demonstrated we unquestionably do have the ability to improve our health and general well-being. In his work, he offers several steps anyone can use to draw upon his or her own intrinsic power to counteract 
those aspects of daily life that jeopardize our well-being. Building on his earlier works, in a subsequent book, Beyond the Relaxation Response, Dr. Benson explains <clears throat> uh, why even the simplest meditation techniques do work, and will work even better if we link it with a deeply felt personal system of belief. Dr. Benson is the Director Emeritus of the Benson Henry Institute for Mind-Body Medicine and the Mind-Body Medical Institute and Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. Please welcome Dr. Herbert Benson. Thank you, John. What a wonderful return to Concord. Having um, lived in Lexington for 31 years before moving, I had the uh, distinct pleasure of meeting John 31 years ago when I spoke at the uh, Concord uh, Philosophical Society. It was a wonderful evening, and what was the place we spoke? I spoke at. It was, it was well, the, it's called the Hillside Chapel. Hillside Chapel. Well, were any of you there 31 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, it's an honor to be here tonight to be able to speak at the Thoreau Society, and to share some of our our ideas on how to counteract the harmful effects of stress. Uh, we should recognize that. 60 to 90 percent of visits to healthcare professionals are related to stress. Thank you. How many of you, but in so doing, we have to keep in mind that we can only counteract stress if we first take care of our routine uh, medical needs. How many of you would literally not be here tonight were it not for medications or surgery? Could I have a show of hands? Yeah, well over half. It's certainly my case. While living in Lexington about 15 or so years ago, um, it was Halloween day and the weather was getting to be cold and we, in, at our house there, we had air conditioning vents in the ceiling. And each winter I would go around putting uh, plastic across those vents to keep away the drafts of winter. And I wouldn't be using scotch tape because come spring it'd be very difficult to get off. I was using masking tape, which of course would peel, and I'd be prepared, you know, going back, tacking it up as the weeks progress. Well, later that day, w walking towards my shower uh, through the kitchen with nothing but a towel around myself, I looked up and sure enough, it was peeling. And I thought to myself, leave it alone. Don't be compulsive. Don't stand on the kitchen chair. It's, it's unstable. I didn't listen. Stood on the chair. It scooted out from under me. I flew backwards, hitting my ribs across the long edge of a butcher block table. A towel flew off, and there I was naked, writhing on the floor. My wife, having heard the crash, came in the kitchen and said, what are you doing there? <laughs> so I tried to explain. I said, don't worry, don't worry, it's spasm, it'll go away. It didn't go away. And I figured, uh, she said, well, should I call 911? I said, you'd better. As they came, and they came very quickly, they, uh, she looked at me and said, you want to put on some underwear? <laughs> so I did so. And they came and said, doc, we've got to really get you to the hospital quickly and um, we're taking you to Leahy Clinic. And I knew I was in trouble, not because I was going to Leahy Clinic, but, but because of their urgency. And this, I reason, could well be my last act in life. And if that were the case, I wanted something to be remembered by, meaningful about that, this you know, happens fast. So uh, she was by my side as I was being carried out, and I called her closer. I said, I called her closer. I said, this is worse than childbirth. Well, in one millisecond, all compassion drained from her face. <laughs> and she said, how would you know? 
and I knew nothing good would come out of this. What I had done was broken five ribs. They had punctured my lung. My lung had collapsed. The chest cavity was filling with blood and fluid, and soon that pressure would be transmitted to the left, to the right. That lung would collapse, and of course, I'd pass away. They quickly diagnosed that at Leahy, put a tube in my chest, sucked out the blood and fluid. My lung expanded. My life was saved. Nothing I'll be describing to you tonight will be that dramatic. But many of us would not be here for, and many of us would not be here, as I said a moment ago, without this capability, these awesome antibiotics and surgeries, restoring sight with cataract operation, goes on and on, yet still 60 to 90% of visits are due to stress, anxiety, mild and moderate depression, excessive anger and hostility, high blood pressure, heart attacks, angina pectoris, insomnia. How many of you have trouble sleeping when you're under stress? Could I have a show of hands? Insomnia. Uh, also, stress does not cause pain, but the hormones liberated by stress, adrenaline and noradrenaline, lower the threshold of pain. The threshold is lowered, the pain gets worse, you worry about it more, and a vicious cycle is created. Um, gender issues in men's sexual performance. Sperm count are both decreased by stress. In women, PMS. Infer ovulation and infertility, hot flashes of menopause are all made worse by stress. <laughs>